Okay, today is gonna be a different type of video because last week I just had one of those thoughts in my head and I just couldn't think about anything else. So I needed to share this theory I have. Here's the thing, a few weeks ago I passed my theory exam for my driver's license, which means I can go on the road now for real lessons. So for the past few weeks this fish has been on the road with shaky hands and uh, bumping in almost every neighbor's car. Yeah, this fish is struggling a lot with driving. But while taking my lessons I've started to notice something and that's that learning to drive a car is exactly the same as learning to play Valorant. Okay, okay, not exactly the same, but there are so many things overlapping. And since I've realized that, I'm actually using some Valorant strategies during my driver's lessons, and driving is getting easier each day. So that, my friends, that's where this video is about. I'm gonna explain some similarities between the two, and maybe if you ever starting those driver's lessons, you might learn to drive way quicker, or the other way around, of course. If you already have your driver's license, you can learn Valorant way quicker. This video is gonna be a very interesting one, so if you like it, feel free to subscribe on the channel. Apparently, relax my cat is now over 800,000 subs so um let's let him be for now little love you're the next goal with your help we might grow bigger than little love now let's start the video let's start with the basics when you start with driving you first gotta learn three things how to give gas how to brake and how to shift gears if you don't master these essentials you will never be able to drive a car correctly and valorant surprise also has three essentials instead of knowing how to give gas you need to learn how to walk correctly instead of braking you have aiming and instead of learning how to shift gears you need to learn how to control your spray these essentials my friends you need to be able to do blindly on autopilot and in both situations in a car and in valorant you learn to do this on exactly the same way someone will explain the basics to you and then you just practice it by doing it hours and hours and hours and eventually if you've done it long enough you won't think about it anymore and then check you know the essentials so you can hit those one tappies wait, wait. Congrats, you know the essentials now, but what's next? The next thing is something we call bijzondere verrichtingen in Dutch, but uh, you can forget about that word. I think the English way of saying it is special maneuvers. Not sure about that though, but I'm talking about parking, doing a U-turn, driving backwards, you know what I mean. These type of skills are of course important to learn if you want to drive a car, but with these special maneuvers, it's not only that you need to learn how to do them, but it's also important that you know when to use them. And then we go to Valorant. These special maneuvers in cars, they look a lot like the abilities in Valorant. Just like the special maneuvers in cars, you don't need to use your abilities all the time, but you do need to know when to use them and how to use them, of course. And another thing that's very similar between these two is that you often need to use a few steps to accomplish what you want. Here's what I mean. Imagine you're driving a car and you need to go for parallel parking. When you do this, in your head, you need to do a few steps. Step one, make sure it's clear. Step two, drive slowly to the back and watch to your back window. At the right time, turn your steering wheel all the way to the right, slowly go back a little, and then all the way to the left, go back a little more and voila you parked your car or you collapsed against that pole you didn't see it happens to the best but anyway in your head you went through like five steps and the same thing goes for the valorant abilities imagine you just planted the spike with viper and you want to go for post plant lineups and you go through the same sort of steps first you throw your cue on the spike then you walk away find that spot where you need to stand for the lineup put your crosshair on that thing wait till you hear the peep peep and then shoot your molly one enemy remaining Upgrade. The way you learn the special maneuvers in a car is the same way how you learn the abilities in Valorant. Pretty cool, my friends. Next up, now we're gonna talk about the mirrors. Something I personally struggle with with driving a car is always looking at those annoying mirrors. If you want to turn to the left, for example, you need to check 1, 2, 3. Put on your direction indicator unless you're driving a BMW. Then watch again, 1, 2, 3. Turn to the left and after that, check your mirrors again. It's, it's annoying. But here's the thing. I've talked with other people about this, but when you start driving a car, most people they check their mirrors but they don't do anything with their info they'll do one two three with their eyes just so their driver instructor doesn't get mad and then do their thing however a little later the longer you drive the more you're gonna do things with the information you're seeing so you drive way more safely but now let's go to valorant i think some of you already guessed where this was going but of course watching your mirrors is exactly the same as watching your minimap constantly in the middle of a round it's important to look at your minimap so now and then so you get information of the enemies but even more important you not only need to look at your minimap but you also need to do things with the information you're getting and this is where a lot of newer Valorant players just like new drivers are struggling with they might look at the minimap but they don't do anything with the info and the longer you play the game the more you're gonna do that so constantly watching your mirrors is constantly watching the minimap same thing right next thing what's a very important thing you need to have if you want to drive exactly coffee but what more a vehicle of course there are tons of models you can go for a BMW a Tesla and each model has some different features that can help you in different ways 
Does this sound a bit familiar in Valorant? Because I'm talking of course about the hardware that you use. Your computer, headset, keyboard, mouse, that is your vehicle while driving Valorant. You can of course buy cheap gear or second hand gear, but that makes playing Valorant a bit harder. And that's exactly the same for when driving a car. If you buy a very cheap car, then you might not have that scream for when you are driving backwards for example. And suddenly driving gets a bit harder. And on top of this, both the gaming hardware and the cars have this in common. They are both so freaking expensive. Relatively speaking of course. If you are younger, then the gaming gear is expensive for you. But when you get older, you of course make more money, but then you need to buy that car. It will be very pricey. And let's move on to the next thing now. Like I said, yes, there are a lot of similarities. And I hope I'm making a bit of sense, but uh, since you're still watching this video, maybe somewhere deep in this theory, there's like a real point that I'm making. I'm not sure. But the next thing, let's talk about car theory. I'm not sure if it's the same in every country, but in the Netherlands, before you can do your driving exam, you need to pass for a car theory exam first. In this exam, you get questions about different lines on the roads, questions about the different signs that you may encounter. And of course, you need to know who can go first if you see like a tram, a bicycle, pedestrians, cars on a very busy spot in Amsterdam. Honestly, driving in Amsterdam is the worst, but you get the point. I think learning for your theory exam is the same as learning the meta in Valorant. As we all know, Valorant is not just aim for the head and shoot, but there's a meta. There are tactics in this game. You, for example, need to learn how to manage your money, when to go eco, when not to go eco. And then, of course, you have the different team compositions. You have to know what agents are working good with each other, why you need the controller in a game, you know. Basically the same as the driving theory. There's one big difference though. Luckily, you don't have an exam in Valorant before you can play the game. A friend of mine, he failed over 10 times for this exam. So yeah, driving theory sucks. Next up, if you play Valorant, then you might have encountered some toxic players. Players like this one. I don't care, I don't care why you play, come from. Play your game, play your, play care, your game. Yeah, that could be very annoying sometimes. But did you know that this toxicity is not only in Valorant, but on the road, a lot of people might also get very annoyed. You might have seen some people on TikTok destroying the mirrors of cars just because they weren't driving when the light turned green, you know? It always surprises me how mad some people might get when they are on the road. And especially the newer drivers get a lot of toxicity on them just because they don't know how to drive, you know? And that's the same as in Valorant. If you're new to Valorant, you don't know how to play the game exactly. People might get very angry on you because you just don't perform very well. There's a small difference between the toxicity in Valorant and the toxicity on the road though. And that's that in Valorant, you can simply mute the people that you don't like. But on the road, you can't really do that. Well, um, I mean, uh, you, you might be able to mute uh, the other people. But I don't think that the cops really like that. So uh, I would not recommend. Next thing, the mindset. When you're playing Valorant and when you're driving, you have to have the same mindset. And that's that you have to stay calm and stay focused. If you don't stay calm in both situations, then you're gonna mess things up. And you don't want that, of course. So you need to keep your head cool. Luckily, if you make a mistake in Valorant, it's not that big of a deal it's way worse if you make a mistake while driving because of course people can get hurt so before you hop into that car make sure you get into the zone Phew, you made it all the way to the end of the video honestly let me know what you think about this crazy theory do i make some points over here or am i just crazy uh, <laughs> that uh, can also be true i hope you enjoyed this video and i see you guys in the next one peace